So when I, um, when I think about endoscopic parathyroidectomy or video-assisted parathyroidectomy, um, I don't think this is advancing. There we go. Um, I divide it into two main categories, uh, the cervical parathyroidectomies and the mediastinal parathyroidectomies, and we'll talk about the different techniques and the pros and cons for each of these. Um, just as a general overview, um, for video-assisted parathyroidectomy, this video does not seem to be playing. Uh, so that video does not seem to be playing. But um, for video-assisted parathyroidectomy, uh, the major advantages are smaller incisions uh, and really cosmesis. Um, as you can see, uh, the other benefit is that you get excellent illumination and really magnification. So it provides you with um, a beautiful uh, approach to the uh, anatomy and identifying the anatomy. You can definitely do bilateral explorations and uh, you have access to ectopic sites, uh, most notably um, the uh, deeper posterior sites. Um, but there are significant disadvantages. Um, oftentimes this requires multiple assistants, um, two, three uh, assistants, uh, definitely need special equipment. It can be ergonomically unfriendly and uh, if you have to convert to an open operation to get uh, either a bilateral exploration uh, or deeper glands, um, you have to make a pretty big incision to do so. Oh, so here, now it's going to play. Um, so you can see here uh, just a nice dissection, and this is an example of the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, the beautiful magnification that you can get with this endoscopic approach. So in terms of the cervical techniques, um, you know, the first that we'll talk about are the complete endoscopic techniques, um, and there are a whole variety of different descriptions. Um, there are central approaches, lateral approaches um, that uh, use a completely uh, insufflation-based technique. Uh, the real pros, again, magnified uh, anatomy, uh, access to ectopic locations, but really um, the main reason for doing this is uh, better cosmetic results or um, presumably better cosmetic results. But again, the cons, um, almost all these patients need to have general anesthesia. The insufflation in the neck can be quite disconcerting for patients under local anesthesia. Um, definitely need some special equipment, and uh, oftentimes this takes quite a bit longer than uh, the traditional open parathyroidectomy. Um, there are, in fact, remote access uh, uh, parathyroidectomy techniques, as you've heard about, um, through the axillary approach or the anterior chest wall. The major advantages of this approach, um, you know, there's no cervical star, scar, but um, again, there are significant disadvantages. It definitely requires general anesthesia, um, and there's quite a bit of dissection, uh, quite a bit more than the traditional open approach. Um, and then there are the so-called incision-based approaches, and this really involves um, a small incision, usually about uh, one and a half to two and a half centimeters in size, uh, and then placing a camera remotely for visualization. And so, um, you know, the pros for this uh, approach, uh, again, magnified anatomy, uh, access to ectopic locations, and again, you know, hopefully a, a really good cosmetic result. Um, and as you can see here, um, a beautiful illustration of the uh, recurrent nerve in a second right here, and then the vascular pedicle uh, with the parathyroid adenoma here. So again, uh, as some of the other um, uh, lecturers were saying, that you get this really great view um, that helps you to preserve the recurrent nerve. Uh, but again, the cons, oftentimes patients need general anesthesia. There are a number of groups that are doing these under local anesthesia. Um, but really requires multiple assistance. Um, you need at least uh, a person holding the retraction uh, as well as a camera, um, uh, camera driver. Uh, and again, this can take uh, a longer period of time than the traditional open approach. Um, this is a summary from sort of the early days of, early to mid days of endoscopic uh, parathyroidectomy. And what you'll see is that the vast majority of these, and um, comparing an endos um, a completely endoscopic approach and an incision-based approach versus a, a large series of open um, parathyroidectomies. And what you can see is that um, the vast majority of these patients require general anesthesia, and um, whereas the uh, majority of patients uh, in this open series uh, were able to have it under a local anesthetic. Um, the OR time was significantly longer uh, in the uh, video-assisted groups. Um, but you can see that this is really uh, quite a safe operation. The recurrent... Uh, Nerve injury rate is about the same. The cure rate is about the same. Um, and these patients, but the patients stayed in the hospital uh, significantly longer. For the open approach, oftentimes patients are ready to go home four to six hours after the operation. Um, this is, data is a little bit skewed perhaps um, because most of the endoscopic work um, quoted came from Europe and the length of stay considerations are, um, are different than in, in the United States. 
Um, a number of groups have updated their experiences uh, with more recent data, and what you find is that we're slowly reaching parity as our expertise with endoscopic parathyroidectomy uh, increases, the operative time drops, uh, drops dramatically, excuse me, um, and again, the length, but the length of stay is still significantly longer for, uh, uh, than compared to the open group. Um, just as an informal um, uh, assessment, you know, we looked at our Columbia experience, uh, including Dr. Adamnitz, um, and uh, we found that actually the open operative time has dropped and um, the median operati uh, open operating time is about 27 minutes now. So for sure, you know, the main benefit of endoscopic parathyroidectomy is uh, cosmesis and you get these beautiful uh, cosmetic results. But when you compare it to a minimally invasive open parathyroidectomy, um, you know, taking out a parathyroid through a two, three centimeter incision, you have pretty much equally good results. Um, so while uh, endoscopic parathyroidectomy is certainly safe and effective, um, the real question is whether or not you, um, you know, uh, whether the risks uh, uh, and the issues with increased assistance, et cetera, outweigh the benefits. Um, but where video-assisted parathyroidectomy really comes into its own is uh, in the mediastinum, the so-called mediastinal parathyroid glands, uh, which happens in about 1% of cases. Um, and the traditional approach for these parathyroids has always been median sternotomy. And, you know, um, it's a painful incision. Patients stay in the hospital for four to five days. And as you can tell from this poor guy, you just are miserable with this approach. So video-assisted uh, parathyroidectomy is really ideal for this uh, type of disease. And prior to embarking on this uh, journey, you want to make sure that you exquisitely localize where your parathyroid gland is, either with sestamibi, selective venous sampling, as you can see in the central panel, uh, or CT scan. <clears throat> uh, there are a whole host of mediastinal techniques, and each of these um, tackles a different type of mediastinal parathyroid. Um, so as you uh, all know, uh, as you all know, mediastinal parathyroid glands can be juxta innominate, uh, which is either just above, at the level of, or just below the innominate vein. Uh, they can be in the aorto, aorto pulmonary window, or they can be squarely in the thymus itself. Uh, and each one of these mediastinal techniques uh, lends itself to one of these locations. So for the juxta innominate um, parathyroid glands, uh, the incision-based or mediastin mediastinoscopy-based uh, parathyroidectomies are excellent techniques. Uh, for the aorto pul pulmonary window, um, uh, thoracoscopic or directed parathyroidectomy is great. And for the intrathymic uh, parathyroids, thoracoscopic thymectomy is a wonderful technique. Um, so this is just an example of the setup of an incision-based um, uh, cervical approach to mediastinal parathyroids. Uh, and this is um, the special sternal retractor that helps you get your working space. Uh, this is a view of the mediastin uh, mediastinoscopy. Trachea is down at the bottom of the screen, and nominates in front of you. Um, and as you're doing your uh, work, you get this beautiful visualization. The one problem with mediastinoscopy is that you really just have the one working instrument. So as you can see here, oftentimes you have to suck out the parathyroid gland. So oftentimes it comes out in pieces, and it's important to obviously get the entire parathyroid gland out uh, if you're going to uh, approach it in this, uh, in this fashion. Uh, thoracoscopic parathyroidectomy. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, can we go back a slide, please? So for a thoracoscopic parathyroidectomy, um, uh, we pay, uh, place these patients in the lateral decubitus position. Actually, can you go back and play that video for me? I think you may have to click on it. Well, uh, this video doesn't seem to be planning, but... Um, for these aorta pulmonary window uh, parathyroid glands, this is essentially just like uh, removing a, a parathyroid in a focused exploration. Basically, you open up the capsule around it, uh, excuse me, the tissue overlying it, and uh, um, you have a focused exploration. For the thoracoscopic thymectomies, um, oftentimes we approach these patients from both sides um, in order to release both sides. Can you play this uh, video for me, please? That's a shame. Um, so uh, in any case, what you would have seen for the thoracoscopic thymectomy is that you can remove the thymus completely, including the cervical horns of the thymus, actually doing a partial neck dissection um, through the uh, thoracoscopic approach. Um, and basically, in this technique, you have to release it from the phrenics, the brachiocephalic veins, 
the pericardium, and then again releasing this uh, cervical horns of the uh, the thymus. Uh, and you can do all of this through a minimally invasive um, thoracoscopic approach. So for mediastinal disease, um, it seems quite clear to me that a minimally invasive or video endoscopic approach um, is well suited. You know, if your choice is between a median sternotomy uh, and this excellent cosmetic result, um, the choice seems pretty clear. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your attention.